Welcome to The Explainer. You know, we hear a lot about the AI arms race, right? But today, we're going to peel back the layers on what that really means. It's not just about the smartest software. It's about who builds the mightiest machine to run it all. So when you think AI, what pops into your head? The newest chatbot? Some crazy image generator? Yeah, that's what most of us think. But the real breakthrough? The real battle. It's being fought on a completely different field. That's right, we're talking about the hardware, the actual physical infrastructure. See, with AI, the cost and sheer scale of all that stuff, the servers, the chips, the networking, it has a way bigger impact on the bottom line than it does for regular software. And that is where the tech giants are throwing down. All right, so let's get into it by looking at Google's playbook. They've been thinking about this stuff for ages, and they don't just design chips. They design the entire system from the ground up. And that right there is their secret sauce. See, instead of thinking one server at a time, Google thinks in these massive units they call pods. You're looking at the building blocks right here. Every single one of these racks is just jam full of custom servers. And inside those servers, they're packed with Google's own custom chips, their tensor processing units, or TPUs, which are basically rocket fuel for AI calculations. And get this, when they build one of their TPU v4 pods, they're not just linking a few chips, they connect a mind-boggling 4,096 of these TPUs together. It's one giant, cohesive supercomputer, all tied together with their own super-fast, custom-built network. Now, to really wrap your head around that number, let's put it in perspective. Google's TPU v4 pod from back in 2020 links 4,096 chips. Now, let's look at a top-tier NVIDIA super pod from 2023. That connects 256 GPUs. So Google's basic building block, their starting point, is a whopping 16 times larger. That's just a different scale of thinking. So you're probably asking, how on earth do you connect over 4,000 chips together efficiently? Well, this is where that system-level thinking I mentioned really pays off. And honestly, it involves a shape that might make you a little hungry. Okay, so most high-performance computing systems, including NVIDIA's, they use a pretty standard network design. It's called a closed network. That's what you're seeing on the left. But Google? Nah. They went down a totally different road. They use something called a 3D torus, and that's the funky-looking thing on the right. And yeah, if you're thinking that 3D torus looks kind of like a donut, you're absolutely right. It's topologically the same thing. And this isn't just a fun little fact. That donut shape is the absolute key to their entire networking strategy. So why a donut? Well, this design gives them some massive advantages. You get lower latency because there are more direct connections between the chips. And, this is a big one, it needs way fewer of those super expensive switches. I mean, for a 4096 chip system, Google only needs 48 of their special optical switches. A similar NVIDIA system, you'd be looking at around 568. That is a huge cost saving. Okay, but, there's always a but, right? This tightly woven design has one giant Achilles heel. If even one single chip fails, it can create a traffic jam that slows down the entire system. This quote here just nails the problem. Without some kind of fix, your good put, that's the actual useful work getting done, could get cut in half. A total disaster for a huge training run. And this is where Google gets really clever. They built a custom piece of hardware, an optical circuit switch, or OCS, that literally reroutes light signals to bypass any failed parts, and it does it in real time. Just look at this chart. Those dotted lines, that's performance without the OCS. It just falls off a cliff as you add more chips. But the solid lines, that's with the OCS. The performance stays rock solid. They literally turned their biggest weakness into an incredible strength. Okay, so we've got this super powerful, super resilient donut network. Cool. But what does that actually mean for the people using it? You know, the researchers and engineers trying to build the next big thing in AI. Well, it means one thing above all else. Flexibility. Total, absolute flexibility. This table is just a peek at a single day of usage inside Google. And you can see over 30 different setups. Because of that magic OCS we were just talking about, engineers can slice and dice this giant supercomputer into any shape or size they need. You need a tiny two-chip system? Done. You need a monster 3,000-chip rig? No problem. It's all perfectly tailored to whatever AI model they're working on. And this isn't just about making things convenient. This flexibility delivers pure, raw performance. Researchers can get really creative and build these twisted network shapes that basically create shortcuts across the donut. 
And the results? Just look at the chart. The regular setups get around 40 gigabytes per second per chip, but those twisted configurations, they're hitting over 65. That's a more than 50% performance boost just by changing the shape of the network. Incredible. So we've seen how they can tailor this thing for pretty much any task. But now let's zoom in on how they optimize it for one of the most important jobs at Google, the one that drives their core business. And it's a type of AI that's very, very different from the big language models like GPT that get all the headlines. I'm talking about deep learning recommendation models or DLRMs for short. You might not have heard of them, but these things are the unsung heroes of the modern internet. They're the engines that power search results, target ads, and decide what you see in your social media feed. We're talking about the tech behind over a trillion dollars in revenue every single year. So what makes them different? Well, unlike a language model that chews on a big, dense paragraph of text, DLRMs deal with sparse data. Just think about a search you do. It's maybe a few words out of millions of possibilities, right? To understand what those few words mean, the model has to look them up in this gigantic digital dictionary called an embedding table. And because these tables are so enormous, that simple lookup process becomes the number one bottleneck. So you've got this unique problem, how to handle sparse data and these massive embedding tables super fast. And this is what led Google to build a secret weapon right into the chip itself. And here it is. It's called the sparse core. It's a tiny specialized processor designed to do one thing and one thing only, make those embedding lookups go lightning fast. It only takes up about 5% of the space on the chip, but the impact it has is absolutely massive. And the result, a truly monumental speed up. Just look at the chart. We'll use a standard CPU as our baseline. That's at the top. Now look down at the TPU V4 with its sparse core. It's over 30 times faster. This is the perfect example of what we've been talking about. A system level problem, we need faster recommendations, led directly to a custom solution designed right into the silicon. And that brings us right back to the main idea here. Google's edge in AI infrastructure isn't because they have one fast chip. It's because they have this whole holistic system that was designed together from the start. Everything from that little sparse core on the silicon all the way up to the custom servers and that giant donut network, it's all built to work in perfect harmony. The system matters more than any single part. Now, this whole custom-built stack gives Google's own teams a crazy advantage. They can build and run AI at a scale and cost that's just unmatched. But it leaves us with one final, really interesting question. As this whole AI race spills out into the public cloud, can this highly specialized, inward-looking advantage actually translate to a win in the external market? That's the big question. And honestly, the jury's still out.